episode uh i'm chris jazz sequence on the internet i'm joined as always uh by binary gary gary in real life he is a uh, shakespeare historian uh analyzing the uh specializing in the myths around uh shakespeare of the bard yes and allison who's Allison Plus on the internet. And she is a uh, toenail collector. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. Large, large mason jars uh, in her basement storage. <laughs> lining the bookshelves they're not for books at all no <laughs> they're trophies how do you catalog such a thing uh, by by color smell <laughs> oh. <laughs> shape shape would be the clear the clear winner out of all the options and this is Binary Jazz, and it's a show where we uh, make each other uncomfortable uh, and attempt to talk about things. <laughs> Usually not quite this early in the episode, but here we are. That's Happy right. Monday, everyone. Happens when I do intros. Wow. What, do you, what do you think the most listened to day... Wait, let me rephrase this. No, I'm not. What do you think the most listened to day of podcasts is? Do you think people listen to more podcasts on weekdays or weekends? And do you think that if it's weekdays, what weekday... I guess what day of the week do you think most podcasts are listened to? I don't know. I think I think Monday is probably pretty good. Okay. Happy Monday, everyone. <laughs> welcome, uh, to your, welcome to your week. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's data and analytics we could look at, but I'm just gonna just go run off the cuff and say Monday. I'm not gonna bother myself with any kind of data. <laughs> who needs data? Who I'll needs put the dog out? Who needs yeah. any of that? I think yeah after the weekend I think people are like they load up the like all the backlog of podcasts that they didn't listen to the week before yeah 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 meanwhile I always have a backlog of podcasts <laughs> I'm looking at our uh, our feedback our questions we didn't get any questions but we did get two uh spam emails uh both involving bitcoins in really bizarre kind of ways one of them uh wants to share with us a magical purse that doubles your bitcoins Ooh, that's so fanciful <laughs> <laughs> it says i, like I do not know on... why this works but it works can we go on a quest to find this Bitcoin purse? <laughs> cool purse. Well, apparently we could just email uh, Taylor Knot oh. at some random number at gmail.com. It's not fakey. If it's not fakey, not I don't fakey trust it. Not fakey McFakerson this time. Fakey McFakerson is, is too real of a, of a name. Uh, <laughs> I like the idea of a magical Bitcoin purse. It does. Yeah, it does sound pretty interesting. Because I picture it like like a fancy brocade and it's like almost like a pencil pouch of some sort yeah right yeah. <laughs> but secretly it's a bag of holding and you shove all of your bitcoins in it and it has an infinite capacity for storing bitcoins like mary poppins bag of just <laughs> infinite bitcoin yeah you missed a lot Yuri. <laughs> no no i heard it all i heard it all <laughs> Even Charlotte is like, no, I'm having none of this Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. We're also joined by Charlotte, who is a small uh, astronaut in training. Yes. Oh, yes. But no pressure. Yeah. Do whatever you want to do with your life. But, but I mean, you're definitely going to be an astronaut. As long as you're an astronaut. Yes. As long as you're 
part-time astronaut, everyone will be very satisfied on this podcast. <laughs> I don't think you can be a part-time astronaut at this point. Wait, what? Okay, the other one is an advertisement, and it says your advertisement is placed on 15,980 high-traveled sites of different mazes. <laughs> Again, it feels like a quest. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> i feel like if i if i'm ever having a site of mazes like i come on guys like better site architecture sites a maze it's not great <laughs> bad user experience take site map to a whole new a whole new level <laughs> <laughs> like get out it's of like a tattered piece of paper with an x in the corner <laughs> there's that blog entry how do i get there <laughs> how do you exit the site if you dare <laughs> <laughs> Just shut the laptop. Your magical pouch of Bitcoin. <laughs> spam is weird. I, you know, I have to, you have to check the spam to make sure that nothing got filtered accidentally as spam, but spam. Is I have not checked spam in a long time. I figure if somebody wrote something and just marked the spam, you know, they'll follow up and say, hey, you jerk, why didn't you reply? <laughs> yeah, except if they're, being fi if they're being marked as spam, then their next reply is probably going to get marked as spam too. That's the problem with spam. I don't know that anybody would email me that I wouldn't also find in a Slack somewhere. Mm -hmm. So like if I don't reply to their email, they would be like, what's the deal? <laughs> yes, yeah, so well, we live on a very special planet. <laughs> Let's get into the topic. <laughs> I love that that was the most amusing. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> my topic this week is 52 Hertz Whale. 52 Hertz Whale. 52 Hertz is really low. Is this the big sound that came from the ocean? The, uh, what do they call it? Which, by the way, just to clarify, the ocean, not as big as space. But really no, big not. but still pretty big it's it's vast it's fast <laughs> i just want to clarify for listeners <laughs> yes for for new listeners joining the show for the first time the ocean is really big but not as big as space <laughs> if, you, if you leave one thing today <laughs> let that be the thing i guess i think yeah. so i think It'd it's be good to it, keep within the scope of you know knowing knowing where you fall within the vast umbrella of, of existence. The relativity of, of size of other objects, yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not as, uh, you know, if you, and if you left learning about that, it'd probably be better than leaving with the only thing you learned about it being a Dyson sphere. Or Bitcoin. <laughs> Magical Bitcoin purses. <laughs> Magical, I'm gonna one. I want, I want, I want Dyson sphere. <laughs> hey, um, one of the things that bothers me about Deep Space Nine <laughs> is the intro music makes it seem so dramatic and beautiful, and it's just like an outpost on the edge of a wormhole. It's the they really they really ruined the the, the music for it. I feel so. Fifty two hertz whale whale w h a l e correct. It hurts H E R T Z. Yeah, right, yeah. Just in case. Well, and five two while we're while we're <laughs> selling things. <laughs> um, what so did you first say about it, Gary? Did you say it's, it's, it's a low it's a low frequency. It is a low frequency. It's a very low frequency. You, probably you probably lower than our range of hearing. I don't think it is. I think that the human hearing is like in the, starts in the, oh, maybe it is. Hmm. Human hearing starts in, it starts with a four, either 40 or 400, which in the grand scheme of things is not that dynamic, dramatically different. It's an only, only in one order of magnitude. That's not, <laughs> like, I, I, I have to guess that space is more than one order of magnitude larger than the ocean. Probably multiple orders of magnitude. So in the grand scheme of the way Gary estimates things, pretty dang close. Pretty dang close. I, I, no, I feel like, I feel like humans, actually now that I say that, I feel like humans, wow. 
Well, definitely lower than my range of hearing. 52 is? Probably. Actually, no, there's, there's, there's a certain frequency. So we learned this uh, a couple times recently on trips. So uh, when we went to Denver, um, there was some weird, there's an insect that was making a noise. And Aaron is like, what is that sound? I'm like, what sound? Like that sound, that bug sound, don't you hear it? I hear nothing. And then she asked the kids, like, do you hear that bug? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, dad doesn't hear the bug. What bug? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and then, uh, and then um, we were, uh, when we went yurting, uh, we were out walking in the, in the night because it was a moon, it was a full moon. So we went on a, a moon walk. Moon walk. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we were walking backwards the entire time. Um, and there was a different bug, different bug making sounds that had the same thing. Like, what's that bug? I have no idea. I don't know what you're talking about. I hear nothing at all. And there's just like a frequency that I guess multiple species of bugs, because they're different, uh, create the sound. And I j it's beyond my range of hearing because my hearing is crap. So uh, that was fun. It's also kind of an ignorance is bliss because it's like everyone else is just like, oh, that bug, it just won't shut up. And you're just like, do, 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 like, this is fine. <laughs> what, what'd you say? I can't hear you. Is there a bug on <laughs> Who knows? I can't hear it. <laughs> I just make wonder. Because I think about like an equalizer, right? Like where you can tune different frequencies. Uh-huh. Like there's yeah. definitely one like in the 40 range. Possibly. 16 yeah. channel graphic EQ, EQ. Yeah, so, I, so humans at least can perceive that frequency. I think this is the most important part about this. Forget the whale. Let's talk about this frequency, <laughs> 52. Why is 52 an important yeah, it number? Might, it, it... Forget the whale. <laughs> yeah. So it's audible. Very, very low. It's probably one of those things that they was, feel as much as... What was that phenomenon you know. where a bunch, bunch of um, recording stations in the ocean like heard a thing? Was that the boop or the blip or the blip? I think it was the oceanic blip. Oh, don't but Google I still that. wanted to be not. the boop. <laughs> <laughs> that, it was a big sound. And at first they thought, well, it was like some kind of like ocean detonation um, far away. But they were, it was recorded in multiple like stations far from each other. And I think that ultimately they settled on it being um, like tectonic shifting or something. But I really want it to be like a whale, like going boop. That's, <laughs> hertz. That's what I want this to be. I want this to be related and identical things. Can we make that happen? Well, <laughs> we talk about that. It's not whale centric, but el I saw a thing recently about elephants, not recently, a while ago, about elephants, and they they have this really deep, low uh, sound that they create uh, that is below the range of human hearing. Uh, so we can't hear it, but it, because it's such a low frequency, it travels vast distances, and they think that they use that to communicate to other elephants that are like miles and miles away. What frequency is that, Chris? Uh, 52. Interesting. <laughs> Fascinating. I would expect it to be a bit higher because I feel like, you know, like it probably like travel further in water than in air, but okay. I believe you. <laughs> you, shouldn't, so we have to you shouldn't believe me about anything. Yeah. <laughs> Ever. You just establish that. Um, so this is the way whales communicate. 15 hertz whale. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that's the uh, communication frequency for whales. Humpback whales specifically, because as we all know, humpbacks Sound like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> how? What? What causes that? What? What resonates at fifty-two hertz? Is it like, like a sound they make in their throat, or like they? For whales or elephants? Pulse? Whales, like they pulse, like the air escaping from their blowhole at fifty-two no, hertz. What's not, the? Not blowhole. Okay. Whales, the elephants it's, it's of the <laughs> So whales have a voice box that, you know, as we know, that that's what, that's what makes uh, 
men's voices lower as we have this voice box. So the whale's voice box is essentially the entire length of their body. So the bigger the whale, the lower the frequency of the sound that they create. What if whale is not actually- Don't animal Google species? that. seems a bit that. too on the, on the nose, right? For the topic for this show. Maybe whale is a euphemism for something. Because we all know that I rarely bring things to the like, table that are straightforward. Yeah, that was where Free I was headed. Euphemism. <laughs> By the way, someone brought up to me that um, they, were, they asked how, how Dyson spheres <laughs> arrive at events. Like, how do you care? Like, is it in a box? Like, how do you, <laughs> how do you so, transport? So you keep it in a small uh, cooler <laughs> filled with ice, obviously, as you do. And the only so thing- ice in your Dyson sphere. Yeah, you ice in your Dyson sphere. Uh, and the only thing in the cooler is the Dyson sphere because it's the only thing that would fit in the cooler. The cooler is about, you know, yay big and you stick the Dyson sphere. It's like one of those six pack coolers, except it has a Dyson sphere in it filled with and, and ice and you bring it to your, your event and you say, voila, you, there's a big reveal as you lift the top off and you lift it out <laughs> and there's the Dyson sphere and you put it on the grill and you cover the grill and then you forget about it for about four hours. Kind of like when it or, when something comes out ever. of like one of those cryogenic spheres and like right <laughs> dry I mean, yeah exactly if if you can fill if it requires can, like a light blue like light below it to help can, illuminate the fog rolling out of the cooler if you can put dry ice in there first then that's even better because that keeps it cool and then you can pour water over it to you know thaw it out and that will create the smoke effect that will then follow you as you lift the Dyson sphere out of the cooler. My answer is the same way you transport a watermelon. You know? It's like under like, the arm. Yeah, and like nervously like you're gonna drop it the whole time and you should like pack it in a trunk so it doesn't roll around. So yeah, I mean like entirely like that. I hadn't even thought about Dyson dropping sphere. a Dyson sphere. Some sort of Dyson sphere oh, swing. Oh, oh, oh. oh man. Now that I thought about it, it's disgusting. <laughs> what sound would it make? Listen, it wouldn't be a 52 hertz, I'll tell you that. It would be like a little splot. <laughs> That's not yeah. Yeah. Oh. Or a blip. You, you, know, you know the foley of, of the fights in Fight Club? It would make that sound. Oh. <laughs> a, very, uh, a very deep, meaty, like, fist-punching oh. face oh. sound. God. Oh, it's so gross. Glad <laughs> I brought us full circle or full sphere. You definitely have more interactions with actual human beings who listen to the show than I think Gary or I have. And that is, that is fascinating considering you are probably the most introverted of the three of us. <laughs> um, you actually talk to people? It's how, true. How does this happen? I don't know. It's all coincidence. I, yeah, I like to keep people safely inside this box here. That's it. End of the day, close it. The, the, only, people, the only people I talk to on a regular basis are those that I live with. Yeah. Me too, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't leave the house. I don't talk to anyone. But the podcast seems to bring out questions, mostly Dyson Sphere related. <laughs> <laughs> well, the binary check. It's a podcast about Dyson Sphere. I mean, it, it's because it's, it's because. Fair. People I know I don't socialize with, but then they listen to the podcast and feel as if we've socialized. Ah, uh, so yeah. I, I, it's perhaps the best introvert strategy ever because it's like, oh, you yeah, don't I'm actually need, talk out. Yeah. And That's you don't actually need to have those, those conversations. Yeah. yeah. But they basically hung out with us, which is great. <laughs> That's fair. All the birds, all the stones, whatever weird phrase you want to use for it. <laughs> I don't need to hang out with everyone because I can just do it here once. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they can do it as many times as they like. You can listen it's to the hanging out. Yeah. yeah there's, there's, you want to hang there's, out, we can make that happen. There's it loads of hidden Easter eggs in every episode. You just need to look for them. The more You only get them on repetitive. Makes, <laughs> makes me sound like such an antisocial jerk where I'm like, I don't need to hang out with you. Just listen to this episode. <laughs> yeah, <we're all laughs> people are like, so, what are you doing next Thursday? Do you want to hang out? Sure, let me send you a link. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> sign up. <laughs>
but if you would like to come on the show, we record on Thursday mornings. Yeah. You can you can join us and talk about that. Shh, they all think it's Monday. Shh. <laughs> well, they can listen whenever they want. We record on Thursdays. I was going to say, break the fourth wall, and then I was just like, I don't even know if that works for audio. Yeah, there's a couple Well, fortunately, there's a video version of the podcast. There's, there's also the wall between, like, time. Uh, why do we still call them podcasts if iPods aren't things anymore? That's a thing. Not, I have one. They're not things. But, what is this? <laughs> that's a phone. Well. Well, color me corrected. Was that, was that like an iPod touch or is that a phone? No, that was a phone. No, but we cool. have an iPod touch. In but fact, it's... okay, so, I, so fun fact about iPod touches. The sixth generation iPod touches are made, I guess, I guess they made the sixth generation iPod touches and the iPads the same or they don't have screws, which means that if the screen breaks, they can no longer pop off the screen and put a new one on. They have to replace the whole damn thing. Ooh. Hmm. Which just goes to show you where technology has taken us. We are now at the point where a roughly $200 piece of technology is disposable and it's easier and faster for them to just give you another $200 device, actually 140, whatever, uh, for the replacement, than it would be to put the time in to just change the glass. Oh, that's, but that's, a, that's like a business and design decision, right? It is. It is, but but that I mean, it, I mean it's, it's not like you're like, yeah. Wait, like, would you want to? I like, I don't know. I mean, I I might. I'm not sure. Would you want a device where you could like flip a couple of clips and then pull the screen out and slap a new one on? Yeah. Once my one? warranty has expired, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like my my old iMac had this thing where it would eat up hard drives, so we just backed up and I would change the hard drive every like six months or something. I still have um, to do that. I have, a, I, I have an iMac behind me on the floor and I have popped the screen off and I haven't taken the hard drive out. So you like, you like put like a plunger on the screen to pull it up. Yep. Yeah. It's great. I about lost a screen one night doing that, drinking beer at the kitchen table and pulled it off and it realized the screen was slipping and fortunately it crashed into the table and not to the floor. Um, yeah. Now the new iMac, like I, I, I'm pretty sure the hard drive is just soldered on the board and everything else is soldered on the board and my upgrade is plug something into USB. Upgrade. Or, yeah, I don't know. Living that dongle life. <laughs> Are you guys big USB-C users yet or no? Uh, judging by the amount of adapters and USB whatever normal hubs I have lying on my desk right now, I'm going to say no. <laughs> yeah. I think I have a couple devices that take USB C cables for that. I have overrated. <laughs> I have one of those, I have a hyperdrive, which is those uh, things that fit into the side of your, your yeah. uh, MacBook. Uh, and it has uh, two USB C ports, one of which is actually in use that connects uh, a monitor like a, a DVI monitor thing cable because I still have a DVI monitor and it's also got what else does it have? Oh, it's got my Ethernet connection because I still used a wired uh, network connection because I'm old school. And then it also has two USB ports, one of which goes directly into an external hard drive, and the other one goes into a four point four port anchor uh, USB hub, which connects all my other things. And that's that's and then the other uh, USB C port that I have is just going to power. So that's that's what I have, and I have many USB C adapters uh, for various things. The one I use most is the USB C to USB adapter. So yeah, I'm not a big uh, USB C user right now. It's pretty pretty compelling. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now that no one's listening, we can talk about the real secrets. Fifty-two hertz whale. <laughs> I'm still rocking my um, 2014 MacBook Air, so that's where I'm at. I loved that device. That was my last laptop before this one. Um, and I, I just love everything about it, all the way it felt. I love how light it was. Um, I know. I'm... I wish that I had more RAM. If I had more RAM, I'd still be using it. I, I'm due for an upgrade, and I am struggling to move on. <laughs> there's, I love not it. A, there's not a great replacement. Yeah. 
that's, yeah, I'm just kind of dragging my feet because I'm not pumped and I want to feel thrilled when I invest such a large chunk of money in something. So, I mean, the best. I used to, I used to do like an entire day's worth of work on one battery charge on that thing. I mean, it was insane. You know, like just how much. Now the I get best, four hours. What? The best, uh, the best MacBook that I had before the one that I have, which is good, but probably it, it's not as impressive as, as the other ones, which were the 2000, late 2011, early 2012 uh, MacBook Pros where you could still uh, open them up and either replace the memory or put up to 16 gigabytes of memory in them, um, which, and they're only advertised for holding eight. Uh, and then the year after, or the next model after, they um, they start, soldered the, the RAM on so that you couldn't actually change the RAM. So I have one that I opened it up and, and upgraded the RAM, and then I have another one that I got for the kids uh, to share, which is obviously a problem in me to get a third one, uh, mm -hmm. which I got with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And, and I, I, I bought that on Facebook for like 500 bucks or something. So like you could get, and it's 16 gigs is not nothing to shake a stick at. And I mean, the hardware is not bad. Have you, have you considered Chromebooks for the kids or no? Have I done what now? Considered Chromebooks for the kids or no? I I've done all sorts of things. I uh, I did <laughs> I, I did EduBuntu yeah. for a while. Yeah. And they hated it. Uh, and then I did some other Linux distribution. They hated that too. Um, I'm pretty sure if they ever saw Windows, they'd hate it. But my son really wants to build a computer, uh, mostly for gaming purposes. And so Windows is obviously the gaming platform. And I'm like, dude, you're going to hate it. <laughs> Let's build you a Hackintosh or something because cause that way you can switch into an operating system that you actually like are used to and know how to do things. You're not going to like a, a, a Windows. That said, I haven't yeah, used Windows in about 10 years. So probably things have changed a little bit. I, I'm thinking, I'm, I don't know what I'm thinking for my next one, but I'm not, I don't know. I'm not really thrilled with the offerings right now for Apple. What am I on? I'm on a. I'm thinking of going 15, mid 2015. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hand carve my code and send it by a courier <laughs> to GitHub. Yeah, I have a, I have a 2016, the new, uh, newer. Uh, MacBook Pro with the uh, emoji bar. Emoji bar. That's all it's good for. I actually haven't used the emoji bar. I think. Have I you played at all with the API on that thing or no? No. I mean, I installed it. Because I feel like that would be my next replacement for my prompt. Instead of I, putting I, stupid I, things in my prompt, I would put stupid things on my emoji bar. <laughs> I, I installed a couple things uh, that were dumb. One of them was a Neon Cat, uh, and one of them was. Uh, what was it? Oh, it was the kit, uh, um, mm -hmm. like a kit bar. And, and, and then I actually saw installed some things that were actually useful. Uh, um, but really the most, the thing I use it most for is, um, the touch ID, which is freaking phenomenal. That's, that's, that's makes the entire thing worth it. Like I hardly use the stupid bar, but the touch ID is, is the best part of it. But you know, huh. pretty soon everything will be face ID and it won't matter. What if you lose your face? That's a legitimate question. I mean, there's, we get National Geographic in the last episode, the last episode, the last issue of National Geographic was about somebody, the last issue of National Geographic was legitimately about somebody who lost their face and got a face transplant. Um, so does, it, does a new iPhone come with that? Or how does that whole thing work? Face, face transplant? <laughs> if you get a face transplant, like with, does the with iPhone come with iPhone, it? Or... With your new iPhone, you also get a face transplant. So work with your uh, face ID. It's true. Wow. Kind of dark. So what is a 52 hertz whale? 52 hertz whale is a whale that communicates at 52 hertz. It can't be and why is that relevant at all? <laughs> Uh, because whales communicate at different frequencies, and there's only one whale in the entire world oh, so that communicates lonely. at 52 hertz, and its name is 52 hertz whale. How would we know that? We can't speak to the whale. Because what if, I told, what if I told you that that is absolutely correct? Underwater recordings. Are you serious? 
I'm so sad now. Wait. What okay. frequency do other whales communicate at? Um, most whales go, I think it's 10 to 40. Okay. And so there's this one whale that... Um, so that wheel sounds a little bit like this if you're talking about whales. Oh my gosh, not only is the whale lonely, but it has an annoying voice. So we, <laughs> so we as- It's the Mickey Mouse whale. So we as humans have, have projected this identity of the world's loneliest whale because we assume that, that it can't communicate with other whales as a result. When In fact, I think it, can, it probably can. It's just not matching up in the it's, same way. It's probably just the annoying whale with a high voice. <laughs> So it's still lonely. I mean, the difference between like not picked for any sporting teams. The play whale kickball. Forty hertz and fifty-two hertz is very vastly different from between the difference between fifty-two hertz and four hundred hertz, like what Gary said earlier, which is like almost exactly the same thing. So they can definitely hear the whale. It's just that he sounds he or she sounds really annoying. <laughs> Hi guys, so what you doing? Oh, let's What's go. What's also here. really interesting is they can't seem to identify the kind of whale, so they they think it's like a hybrid whale, or maybe it's potentially like a deaf whale. They have all sorts of different theories. Um, I love not, a hybrid whale. They, they so it's like it. it's like internal combustion and battery powered whale. Yeah. It like travels so low. Solar it's powered. Deepened, it's deepened a little bit to like 49 in the past few years, I guess. Oh, so now it sounds a little more like this. I think what's so funny. I want to know what the difference was between your 52 and 49. This is 52, this is 49. No, like there's a percentage I want to know. Like we need to, we need to figure out. Are you close? They compared it, they compared it to like just a little higher than the lowest note on a tuba, which is still like really low to me. Well, yeah, but it's a whale. But it's less fun than a Mickey Mouse whale, for sure. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm talking relatively for whales, if you're... For whales, yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, so the loneliest whale in the world, poor guy. I don't yeah. think it's the loneliest whale in the world. <laughs> it it's it's just like the it most is. misunderstood. <laughs> it's just the most misunderstood. <laughs> it's, it's it has black most, nail polish. It's, yeah, it's the, definitely the goth whale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of the whale that sings by itself, and I guess it's just yeah. kind of like oddly, oddly poetic and weird. I'm an artist, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and like the fact I'm an artist, mom. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an artist, mom. And like the fact that no one's responding in the same the same way. They're just like, ah, oh, here comes. Terry again. Like, yeah. <laughs> Zach, that's exactly, oh, we're going to go look for some fish over this way. Where are you going, guys? <laughs> Wait up, not my glasses. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. Oh, I think it's our listener questions, isn't it? Uh, yes, we don't have listener questions this week. If you want to submit listener questions, please go to binaryjazz.us and scroll down to the form and we'll answer your questions on an episode in the future. Or you can hit us up on Twitter at Binary Jazz. When we don't have questions, Allison gives us questions. We have many Allison questions. <laughs> uh, we have six minutes left. So I'm gonna go to the beginning, which is the oldest one. Uh, and your daughter has to go to school dressed as a famous person from history and has asked you to help. You're not allowed to buy anything, can only use what you have at home. Who would you go as and what would you use? <laughs> I forgot about this um, question, to be honest. <laughs> this would definitely be a thing where I would, in, I would um, like need buy-in from her in the process, right? So... We would have to brainstorm together to figure out who that would be. Yeah. The who doesn't matter as much, though. We would raid the dress-up um, basket and make it work, um, which includes things like a butterfly headband, um, <laughs> a cowboy hat, um, a safety vest, a construction hat. Oh, my gosh. Um, I, apparently, she would go as the... Uh, who sings the song YMCA? 
the village people? Thank you. Two ghosts of village people. <laughs> I don't think there was a butterfly in the village people here. There is now. Uh, in, now. In lieu of an Indian. Yeah, definitely more culturally sensitive. Well, yeah, we'll sub yeah, out. Butterfly. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to say like Joan of Arc, but I don't, again, like the buy-in from her, I don't, I mean, she would probably kick me if I tried to <laughs> If you tried to burn her at the stake? Yeah, I would hope no. so. Joan of Arc is awesome. Just because she was burned at the stake. I mean, that's one thing that happened to her. That's later on. <laughs> yeah, that's at the end. That's the end of the story. <laughs> that's not when you first show up for, for right. your school project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless you're like Wednesday Adams. <laughs> Although, now that you mention it, a, a, a Salem witch is, would also be a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good option. Um, on brand, for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh. Next, All right, everybody start the show. Next question. What are you reading right now? I'm not reading a whole lot. Um, uh, yeah, I, don't, I grabbed the book. I'm in the middle of like three books. Actually, no, I just got a copy of, um, I'm not reading it per se because it's not a thing that you read, but I just got my copy of the Responsible Communication Style Guide. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I'm not reading it because it's a style guide. You don't read it, but I have been flipped through it many times recently, and, and that's pretty awesome. Um, that's a good reference. There's also, this, this is something, uh, I haven't, re I've read parts of it. Um, it was written by um, Aaron's great grandfather, not her grandfather, but her grandfather's father. And it's, like a story of his life, but it's told in this really prosaic, non-linear, like a whole bunch of stories mashed together. So one day I was on, I was heading home and we decided to cross a potato patch and we pulled up all the potatoes and we threw them at each other and made a big mess. And then the farmer who owned this potato patch saw, so we all ran back home and disappeared. And later that night, the farmer came by and he said, did you pull up my potatoes? And I said, I did. And so he said, well, we're going to have to make you pay for those potatoes. <laughs> it's those fascinating day by days about potatoes that... Yeah. So I, I have it because um, it came from her, because her grandparents uh, both passed recently and it kind of came, was uncovered among, amongst other stuff. And so I have it because my plan is to, because our plan is to digitize it, to, to scan it and, and make copies. Um, and I haven't done that yet. So it's sitting out and while it's out, I've like picked it up and flipped through it. I'm like, wow, this is really both fascinating and really badly written, but also really, really bizarrely, morbidly interesting. So that's what I'm reading. That's like quite that's the assortment. Way better than what I'm reading. Wait, what are you reading, Gary? I, I picked up a textbook from um, on software um, management, like software writing management from like the late seventies. The late seventies. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's in, it's 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 just so wild, like what what best practices were at the time, or even like just thoughts of best practices were like, how do you take requirements and turn it into software? Are you finding it relevant at all, or? Um, I actually, yeah, I'm finding parts of it, like we, we fall into many of the same like traps based on like assuming understanding of knowledge, like assuming understanding of intent. Um, and we still can't get user interfaces, right? I, I was watching a talk yesterday uh, that, and he quoted some old paper from the 60s or something, but it was talking about how um, software is only incidentally written for computers and machines. Software is a language that is trying to communicate a set of instructions or a set of uh, solutions to problems from one programmer to another programmer. It's, it's a means by which we communicate to other developers. And as such, yeah, we're really bad at it because we write code that is indecipherable. We don't comment our stuff. And that's uh, not the point of software. It's not, it's not to I make wish a thing happen. Yeah. I'm, I'm so against the, the standard of um, blanket doc blocks. Like inline comments are super useful. Blanket doc blocks are... 
Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.